you would turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, I want to talk to you about dreams this morning. My subject, the dream is bigger than you. This is a powerful word from the Lord. It's a word for everyone, no matter what stage you are in life, no matter what stage you have reached in life, this is a powerful word. The dream is bigger than you. Everybody has dreams. But what I want you to know is that what you cannot do, with God's help, you can do. What you've dreamed for that you feel like you may never achieve, I want to tell you on the authority of God's word, it is impossible because all things are possible to him that believes. But today I want to speak especially to young people. That's what we're celebrating, people graduating. And I want to look at Philippians 4.13. This is where the Lord spoke to me. Very familiar verse of Scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. I can do it because I have Christ in my life and I have an I can do attitude. Hallelujah. The Bible instructs us, young people, to remember the Creator in the days of our youth. And today we're celebrating our youth that are graduating to the next grade level in their education. We've seen people up here today that they've overcome some tremendous obstacles. And each one of them has a testimony of what they have had to personally overcome. Some of you young people in here, you were saved at an early stage in your life. Some of you young people, you have recently been saved in your teenage years. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for your ministry to the youth and others that minister to the youth. Some of you, under the sound of my voice and watching by live stream, you have never been saved. And I know that young people dream big dreams because I'm a young man still at heart. And I still have some big dreams, amen. But I found out something in life that has empowered me to do the things that I have done and to accomplish the things I have accomplished in life. I know that young people dream big dreams, and that's all right. It's okay. It's okay to dream big dreams because if you have a dream, God is a dream maker. He is the dream maker. And that's what I want to talk about today. How do you turn your dream into a reality? How do you take that dream that right now it's inside of you, and how do you get that dream outside into the real world, and turn that dream into a reality. My subject this morning, the dream is bigger than you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for everything we have celebrated today. And Father, we thank you for the love that's in this place. Lord, for the love in families, the love in homes, the love, oh God, that we have experienced as we received you as our Savior. The love, Lord, that's in the body of Christ. We are a loving, growing church, bringing hurting families to a healing Jesus. And the Lord, I pray today that you will speak through these lips of clay. And God, that something that I say will register, Lord, with people that are going through the various stages of life. And God, it will register and impact them in such a way, God, that their lives will be forever changed. Let my tongue be like that of the writer's pen. Thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Give us a listening ear, and everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. amen. That's the favor of God that comes with our salvation, but favor can have a much broader definition than that. When we are saved, we become God's child, and he blesses us with favor simply because we belong to him. That's why we say it around here. Say it with me. I am blessed and highly favored of God. Say it again. I am blessed and highly favored of God. Now look at your neighbor and tell them, you are blessed and highly favored of God. See, favor is a gift of God, but favor can grow in your life. And when you do certain things in life, you draw upon God's favor. You don't earn favor, but you can grow in favor. And favor can be, be released upon your life by obeying the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Favor can be released upon your life by hard work. 
And if you don't know that yet, young people, you're in for a rude awakening, and you will find out that you're going to have to work to make your dreams come true. Favor can be released on your life because of kind deeds. Because when God sees you doing kind deeds for others, then God releases favor upon your life. You don't earn favor, but you can grow in favor. Look at Proverbs 10, 22. I love this. It says, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. There are people that they become rich, but they become rich by doing things that are wrong, and sorrow comes with that. But if you serve God, and if you let Christ direct your life, then that favor that comes upon your life, it will bring blessings upon your life, and there will be no sorrow that follows that blessing. Because God is a God of favor, God is a God of blessing, and God has purposed good things for everyone's life under the sound of my voice. And everyone that's not listening to me, amen. See, when you follow Jesus, favor follows you. And favor can find you in some strange places. We, we saw some people graduate today that it looked like from the natural circumstances they had absolutely no chance of ever accomplishing what they accomplished. But they got God involved and they have accomplished some great things and now they're launching out into the next phase of their life. But favor can find you in some strange places. Favor can find you in a dysfunctional family. Favor can find you in a bad job. I heard a man tell about that yesterday, how I hated that job. He had fallen from grace, but guess what? God sent some people and favor found him, hallelujah, in a bad job, and now God has restored him. I tell you, God is a good God. Favor can find you in the unemployment line. We got some testimonies. Hold your hand up if you come here and didn't have a job and now you got a job. Go on, wave it at the Lord. Go on. Look at all those hands. Let the devil see it. Hallelujah. Favor can find you in the unemployment line and favor can find you when you are losing everything. And if God has given you a dream, God's favor can find you no matter where you are and who you are, what you've gone through, because all things are possible with God. What you cannot do, you can do through Christ Jesus, the Lord. And he will empower you with the Holy Spirit so that you can accomplish the dreams that he has put in your heart. Some of you need to dream some big dreams. And if you will include God in those dreams, and if you'll include God in what you're trying to do in life, you can achieve the impossible. It's impossible with others because they don't have a dream for it. But you got a God-given dream for it. And if you'll put your hand in that nail-scarred hand and walk with the King of kings and the Lord of lords, favor will overcome your life and God's blessings will overtake you. You've seen me do it a hundred times. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. See, God's favor is for a lifetime. And once you connect to God and you stay connected to God and you let him orchestrate your every move and let him tell you what he's purposed for your life instead of you trying to do it yourself, God will order your footsteps. God will bring it to pass. God will do it. Hallelujah. Go on and praise him if you found out that to be true. See, if you've never been down and you don't know what I'm really talking about yet, but if you've ever lost everything, and I did, and then you put your hand in the hand of God, hallelujah, and God started to change things for you, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, church? Go on and praise him for what he's done in your life. Hallelujah. As a little song that was made popular years ago by Andy Williams, To Dream the Impossible Dream. And I thought about that song. Listen to the lyrics. To dream the impossible dream. To fight the unbeatable foe. To bear the unbearable sorrow. To run where the brave dare not go. To right the unrightable wrong. To love pure and chaste from afar. To try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. This is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far, 
to fight for the right without question or cause, to be willing to march into hell for a heavenly cause. And I know if I'll only be true to this glorious quest that my heart will lie peaceful and calm when I'm laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this, that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. What I'm trying to tell you is you can do it through Christ Jesus our Lord. God is the dream maker. So follow after your dream and the world will be better because you dared to dream the impossible dream. Don't ever let a quitting spirit get on you. Don't ever let a quitting spirit rule your life, but go after that dream. And if you will do that with your last ounce of courage, I promise you, you will achieve on the authority of God's word the dream that God has placed in your heart. Go on and praise him, hallelujah. Because God has given some great dreams to some people in here, and you can be a world changer. Because God called you to this time in his kingdom. Joseph. You can't talk about dreams without talking about Joseph. Joseph, he is known as Joseph the dreamer. He had a God-given dream. And his dream caused him to become a world changer. His dream challenged his life. See, life is full of challenges. Life is full of setbacks. Life is full of disappointments. But if you got a dream, you realize that the obstacles that you have to overcome, that you can overcome them if you do it through Christ because the dream, it is bigger than you. Don't try to do it in your human strength. When God comes along and says, if you'll put your hand in my hand and you'll trust in my son, then I will empower your life, and I will cause your dreams to come to pass. See, Joseph, let's just look at the progression of his life. Joseph went from the pit to Potiphar's house. He went from Potiphar's house to prison. He went from prison to the palace. And from the palace, he stepped into his destiny. Glory to God. He was destined to be a world changer, and he was. He was a world changer simply because he followed his dream. He didn't let anything in life ever keep him from following that dream. It was in his heart. It was put there by God. And if you got that dream, I can promise you that dream will come to pass if you will allow God to order your steps and your stops. Sometimes you got to stop yourself from doing some things that you shouldn't do. You just got to stand there, and the Bible says, having done all to stand, stand and see in the salvation of the Lord. Some of you have aborted your dream because you didn't stand and fight. You got to fight this thing through. Great it is to dream a dream when you stand in youth by the starry stream, but greater it is to fight life through. And say at the end, hallelujah, the dream came true. God did it. I just put my hand in the master's hand, and he did it all. I just walked through the journey with him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Joseph was a world changer. You may be thinking, well, pastor, I don't have a dream like that. Well, if that's you, then get connected to somebody who does have a dream like that. And ride their coattails. And before you know it, God will birth a dream in your heart. Brother David Johnson back there on that PowerPoint, he came here years ago. And he told me, he said, Pastor, I see God's favor on your life. I'm going to ride your coattail. He didn't have a chance of getting in college. It looked like his grades were great, but he didn't have the monies to go. And he got overlooked. But he said, I'm going to find that favor you're talking about. And they gave him... From the college he attends, he's a junior now, he'll be graduating next year. They gave him a scholarship that fully paid for everything there, hallelujah. And he's got a nice automobile, brand new car he's driving, got a good job, he's working. He's applying himself. You just can't dream a dream. You got to fight it through. You got to apply yourself. And young people, I'm here to tell you that if you will do that, 
eyes not seen, ears not heard. It's not even in the hearts of man, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. Love God with all your heart. Love God with all your soul. Love God with all your strength. Love God with every fiber in your life, and you will accomplish the impossible. Go on and praise him. Don't you know he's a good God? Hasn't he been good to you? Look at the testimonies around us. Look at that family, four generations of people in the church that connected themselves to God and God's favor has been upon their lives. Hallelujah. God's a great God. Hallelujah. Look at Psalms 37 verse 3. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land and verily shall thou be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. In other words, he'll put that dream in your heart. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust in him. He shall bring it to pass. You say, well, I can't do that. Well, I gave you a formula. I can do all things. Philippians 4, 13, put it back up there. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Abraham, God told him, said, I want you to get out of that land. He said, if you'll get out, I'll show you some things. Some of you need to get out of the stuff you're in. God said, if you'll get out, I'll show you something. He said, and after I show you these things, he said, I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you into something. He said, and after I make you, I'm going to bless you. He said, and after I bless you, I'm going to make you a blessing. That's what the dream is all about. It's about God's blessings coming upon your life so you can bless others like Brother Bud Tedder has done that. Like others, countless millions have done that as they stood in that place of authority as the head of their home. Trust in the Lord. Amen. See, that's the key to your destiny. Delight yourself in God. Get God involved in everything you do. Trust in the Lord. Obey his commandment, and God will take care of you. I love those old songs. God will take care of you through everything. See, those songs, they just speak to me, but the word will speak to you. Let God speak to you. Let the spirit of God direct your path. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you that dream. He will place his desires in your heart, the desires that he has for you. See, I'm a businessman. I was not saved when I started in the business world. But when I did get saved, guess what? I knew I wasn't, even though I loved my job, I, I, I really loved what I did. But I knew that wasn't my destiny. I knew that was a voice calling me from the time I was a little boy. And it took me a long time to get that, but when I got there, I began to give God everything. And I began to delight myself in the Lord. And first of all, he's just fixing my life. And then he began to put the desires in my heart that he had purpose for my life. And that's what I want you to see. Don't go through the process I had to go through. Just listen to good Holy Ghost preaching. Listen to some wisdom. Listen, listen to someone that knows. And you won't have to figure it all out by yourself. Hallelujah. God will show you. Amen. My question is this, do you want to succeed in life and realize your full potential? Let me say that again. Do you want to succeed in life and realize your full potential? I want to give you a verse of scripture that will help you. Look at 1 John 2, 27. Now, I'm talking to people that have already been saved, been born again, and they know Christ. 1 John 2, 27, but the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you all things, and is truth and is no lie, and even as it is taught you, you shall abide in him. Now you need good counseling in your formative years from those who are mature in the Lord. That's the process. We saw that illustrated through the Teller family this morning. A wise father counseling his son, counseling his grandson, and now counseling his great-grandson. Get some wise counseling in your formative years. It'll help you, I promise you. But the greatest counselor is the Holy Ghost. And he will teach you and he will lead you and he will guide you into all truth. He will show you things to come. He will empower you. 
He's the one that puts that dream in your heart. He wants to bring it to pass. But the key word in that scripture, look at that again, 1 John 2, 27. It says, ye shall abide in him, the very last part of it. See, the key word is abide. The Holy Ghost does not commute. He does not come and go, amen. But he is with you, he is in you, and he is for you. And when he comes, he comes to abide forever. See, you have an anointing from God if you are saved. And he's the dream maker. But it's up to you to go after that dream. You got to go after it. Whatever it is in your heart that you desire, you've got to go after it. You can't just sit back and think it's coming to you. It's not coming. But when you take one step, God will take ten steps. When the prodigal son, yeah, go on praise him. When the prodigal son started coming back home, the father saw him, and he got up and ran to him. Woo! And when God sees you moving into your destiny, you know what God will do? He'll come and he'll carry you. He'll carry you into that destiny that he has purposed for your life. But the key word is abide. What I'm trying to say is this. God works when you work. God works when you work. And if you are saved, you have an anointing. Christ the anointed one. He is with you. He is in you. He is for you. And he is the source of your strength. Oh, Caleb in the Old Testament, he said, give me that mountain. That was his dream. He said, I'm just as strong as I was. When I was a young man, he's 85. What was his strength? Was it his bulging biceps and his rippling muscles? No. His strength was God. And if you'll find God to be your source and God to be your strength, go and praise him. You can accomplish the impossible in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The dream is bigger than you. But I got some real good news. The dream is not bigger than your God. I said the dream is bigger than you, but the dream is not bigger than your God. See, life has its challenges. It is full of challenges. There are giants in the land. And when you face the challenges and the giants in life, you can either become a warrior or you can become a warrior. See, a warrior, they always have an excuse they have a victim mentality. Everybody just did me wrong, and I've never had a chance in my life. But a warrior, they don't have a victim mentality. They have a victor mentality. And the warrior knows their source, and they know I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. A warrior says, I'm tired of excuses. I'm tired of this situation that I'm in, and I'm going to get up and do something about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. A warrior dreams the impossible dream. And he rises up in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because he knows who he is. He knows who his God is. And he knows what his God can do. Hallelujah. Get God involved in everything you do. This is how you do this thing I'm talking about. This is how you do it. You win by going after your dream. You win by going after your giants. David didn't just stand back and say, oh, come to me. No, he picked up five smooth stones in case there were some brothers hanging around. And a five-footer running after a two-footer said, you come against me with sword and spear, but I come against you in the name of the Lord God of hosts. This day shall he give you into my hand. Woo! And he takes off running and slung the sling. Hallelujah. Rocking a rag. That's all it took to drop that giant because he had the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You have an anointing. All you need is to use what you have. Start where you are. Use what you have. Make something of it. And never, 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 never be satisfied. And you can do it. You can do it through Christ. That's how you do it. God wants you to go after that dream. He wants you to pursue him. Look at Jeremiah 29, 13. Brother Phillips, 
one of his favorite scriptures that God spoke to him one day. It says, and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. What verse of scripture has God deposited into your spirit? That verse that he spoke to you, when God takes time to speak a word to you, memorize it. Learn where it is. Learn what it says because you're going to hit some storms. That's a dream killer. He's called the devil. That's a dream maker. He's called God. But greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And if you'll go after it, and if God has put it in your heart, glory to God. If you'll seek him with all your heart, he said, you'll find me, and I'll show you the way. Go on, praise him. Hallelujah. He'll show you some things. That means you don't stop. That means that you press in on God until you get your breakthrough. That means if you can believe and if you will follow your dream, you can do the impossible. Because you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. See, the anointing is in you. I, I try to encourage people, because that's one of my anointings, to be an exhorter, to encourage those. And that's what I'm trying to do today, is to take the thrust that God put in me, woo, and release it into others. So you have a thrust, because it's important that you have a thrust. It's important that you don't feel inferior about yourself, Amen. When you feel inferior, you're giving place to the devil. Say, no, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And you can never, 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 never feel inferior if you're working for God and serving God. You've got to learn to trust the God factor. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Life has its ups and its downs. I wish I could tell you that everything is just going to be rosy, but it's not. Life has its victories, and life has its disappointments. How many know what I'm talking about? But no matter what you face in life, God is with you, God is for you, and God is in you if you are saved, and you can do it through the Christ in you. So dare to dream the impossible dream, and don't ever limit God in your life. Don't ever limit God. You may think you're limited, but you're not if God says do it. God will provide everything you need to accomplish what he has purposed for your life. Follow that dream is what I'm saying. You serve the El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. And you serve the God of miracles. Hallelujah. And you can reach your full potential if you will love and serve God with all of your heart. Believe God, young people, for that education. Believe God for your future. Believe God for the right mate. Believe God for that career, for that dream that you have in your heart. Believe God for additions in your life. God is not a taker. God is a giver. And God will start out blessing you and adding to your life, and all of a sudden you get into the multiplication phase of it, and God's blessings just start overshadowing you. He said, if you'll come out, if you'll get out of that situation you're in, if you'll get out of the world of sin, he said, I'll show you some stuff. He said, and after I show you some stuff, I'm going to make you into what I planned for your life. And after I make you, I'm going to bless you. And after I bless you, I'm going to make you a blessing. But you got to go after it. Go on, say go after it. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Believe God. Trust God. Serve God, obey God, and it will happen. Not enough devils in hell to stop it. There is no devil that can stop you. There is nothing that can stop you except for you. And if you believe you can, you can. And it's just that simple. Because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Hallelujah. You got to get a warrior spirit. You got to... Have that warrior anointing. The Bible says the violent take it by force. We're not violent toward people. We love people. We're violent toward the kingdom of darkness. We tear his kingdom down. And we pray, God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. There's a lot of people depending on you. There's a lot of people that are depending on your dream. You might think it's all about you. God said, uh, if you'll come out 
If you get out of that stuff, he said, I'll, make, I'll show you. After I show you, I'll bless you. And after I bless you, I'll make you a blessing. Now, that's another sermon. But I'm trying to get that part of it in you. Because when I preach it, I want it to impact your life like something you've never heard before. Hallelujah. The Lord has purposed good things for your life. And the Bible says that the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter. Brother Philip and I were looking over that one late last night. Hallelujah. More. It, it shineth more and more unto that day, that perfect day. That's King James. But it gets brighter and brighter because God is leading us to that celestial city. And there are battles on the way, but praise God, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. Look at this right here. Psalms 115 verse 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more. I showed you four generations this morning. Look at this. You and your children. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. I remember when it was hard for me to pay my bills. Guess what? If you got family members and they're young and you got plenty of money, start giving them some of it now. Don't make them struggle through the stuff you had to struggle through. Make some of it easy. Give them something. Help them get that dream to come to pass. Hallelujah. Sow some seed into it, and God will bless your life. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Look at this one right here. The, the, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Look at verse 15. I almost missed that one. You are blessed of the Lord, which made the heaven and the earth. Isn't that beautiful? You're blessed. You're highly favored of God. Listen to me, young people. I want to tell you who has chosen to bless you. Who has chosen to bless you? Not the United States government. Not the Rockefeller Center. Not Warren Buffett and his billions or Bill Gates and his billions. No, no, no. God has chosen to bless you and God's blessings have no limit. Absolutely no limit. Hallelujah. I am shocked at where I am in my life at this time. I, I, I got, years ago, I sold stuff. I just wanted to get rid of some of it and make my life a little simpler. But that's what God has purposed. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, generational, and the blessings of Abraham. Listen to this one. I got to land this thing. But it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. And verse 29 said, if you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and as according to the promise. You are blessed and highly favored of God. And if you'll do your part and serve God, God's blessings have no limit on your life. Hallelujah. So die of the dream, the impossible dream, and put your hand in God's hand and go after it. Joseph had a coat of many colors. Listen very carefully. He had a coat of many colors, and he had a dream that drove him. It drove Joseph to live holy. Go look at his life. It drove him, his dream did, to achieve things in life. His dream drove him to greatness. It drove him to never, never, never give up. A dream will give you a passion. A dream will release you to grow. A dream will cause you to get up of a morning with a pep in your step, with a vision for the day, with, with something inside of you saying, I'm going after it. Hallelujah. A dream will cause you to grow, church. They put Joseph in a pit, but that didn't kill his dream. They put him in prison. But that didn't stop him. See, a dream will encourage you in the hardships of life. A dream will give you joy and excitement. Hallelujah. Peter called it joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, a dream will drive you. A dream will motivate you. Because a dream is energy to your soul. Let me say that again. A dream is the energy that motivates your soul. Hallelujah. Young people, there's a lot more 
inside of you than you realize. You are connected to omnipotence. You are not here by an accident. You are here by God's divine design. And you need to see yourself as God sees you. Yes. And this goes not only for young people, but for everyone. No matter what stage you're at in life. Colonel Sanders was 85 when he started finger licking good chicken. Hallelujah. So you're not too old. God says, I know the thoughts I have for you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a fu future, to give you a hope, to give you an expected end. In the beginning, God yes. created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says there was darkness upon the face of the deep, and the earth was void. Listen very carefully. Do you know what that means? It means that you need nothing for God to do something great in your life. All you need is God. The dream is bigger than you, but the dream is not bigger than your God. Which takes me right back to my text, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Listen to this. Joseph, his brothers betrayed him, but he forgave them yes. because he had a dream. Who do you need to forgive so God can bring your dream to pass? His brothers were afraid that David would take revenge. That Joseph would take revenge when he found out his brothers had done him wrong. Look at Genesis 50, 19. And Joseph said unto them, fear not. And this is what you've got to realize if you're born again, serving God. Fear not, for, I, for am I in the place of God? He said, I'm in the place of God. I'm where God has purposed for my life. Some people, they think, I just got to go do this and go do that. No, stay where God has placed you. A rolling stone never gathers moss. Put some roots down and work and work and work and work. And if God has spoken to you, it'll come to pass if you'll walk with the King of Kings. Amen. Verse 20. He said, I'm in the place of God, verse 20. But as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Joseph said, my dream has come true. And I'm in the place that God has purpose for my life. Are you there yet? Yes. Are you there? Have you reached that place in your life, no matter what age or stage you're at? That you can say, God, I've prayed, and I've sought you, and I'm in the place that you've purposed for my life. Let us stand. Great it is to dream a dream. I can remember when I was a young man, had a lot of dreams. Great it is to dream a dream when you stand in youth by the starry stream, just looking at it, wondering all about it. But greater it is to fight life through and to say at the end, the dream came true. I'm standing in the place that God yes. has purposed for my life. Hallelujah. I give, myself away. I give myself to you, Lord. Take me as I am. I give myself Make me away so what I should be. Can use me. I give myself away. Maybe you need to come and renew your dream. We visited someone yesterday, the genesis of a new beginning. Maybe you need to make that new beginning today. I give myself to you, Lord. Maybe you've never committed and totally surrendered to the Lord. And you need to be saved. And God, I've not reached that dream. But God, I still believe. I believe 
you're good. I believe you'll help me. I give myself away. Oh, I do. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself to you, Lord. Pray that from a sincere heart. If you never prayed it, say, Lord, I'm here for a new beginning. I need a new genesis in my life. A new beginning. And God, that dream is still alive. You put it there. And I can do all things through Christ. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Wash my sins away. Forgive me. Oh, God, take me as I am and make me, make me what I ought to be. He said, get out. Get out of those wrong relationships. He said, I'll show you some stuff. Now, after I show you this, I'm going to make you. I'm going to bless you then. And after I bless you, I'm going to make you a blessing. Woo! Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Thank you for your your grace upon my life tell him that thank you God for your grace you may not even acknowledge him but you need to if you've got your right mind if God has spared your life if you're breathing if you've got a wife if you've got a home if you've got a family you might be going through some hard things but say God I love you I give myself to you take me as I am oh God and make me make me what I should be Away, so you can use